Welcome back to the podcast, You Beautiful Soul, and first guest podcast in a long time. And I'm so grateful for the guests that I get to interview today. And she's someone who has played a very pivotal role in my life. And she might not realize to the degree that she has because she came into my life at a very big transition and growth period for me. But we'll get into that soon. This is the real Rebecca Miller on Instagram. She's a high, a mindset, high performance business and life coach. And I don't honestly think that does does the justice of who this woman is and the impact she's making on herself, on her family, on her business, on her business owners that she coaches. And she helps people from the personal side of things, the business professional side of things and integrates them so beautifully. And that's something I really admire about this woman. And we're going to hear her journey, her story, her failures, her successes, and a ton of lessons along the way. So if you're into business, having a successful life, a thriving personal life as well, tune into this episode, guys. Beck, thank you for being here today. Oh, I'm going to receive that. It's something that I'm really leaning into um, is receiving. Thank you, Lewis. I absolutely you. love you and I feel honored to be here with you today. And likewise, I love and receive and um, yeah, give that back to you as well. So this is, uh, yeah, like I said, it's uh, it's the first guest I've had in a while because I've been kind of in like lockdown mode for my life and it's been beautiful for us to connect and I had the honor of coming down and seeing your space and working with your clients, which is really beautiful to be there and to see just the impact that you're genuinely making on people and not not that anyone is quote better or like more important to help than others, but you're in a position where you're helping people who therefore help so many other people through their businesses, through their clients and it's just so awesome. So I would love to start because I actually don't know this very well. So I, I love learning this about the people I have on my podcast is your journey. I don't know. I, I know snippets of it. I've heard it kind of like in passing through Kerwin where we connected. But if you could just give us like a trailer of your your life and your journey of, yeah, how'd you get to be who you are today? Beautiful. Um, I can't, by the way, I just want to say I can't wait to read your book. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to it. Um, and congratulations on all the hard work that goes into that. My story, whoa. Um, well, I am from a family of five children, um, entrepreneur parents. Uh, they started their business really young. And, um, and as you can imagine, being in a family of five children, you know, it's, it, it's a pretty chaotic um, upbringing. Um, school for me wasn't my thing wasn't my jam I was the the child that was told told that I was dumb and you know I was the one in the the class that um had to get the special you know get teachers to help me with reading and all those things I just didn't love it I didn't have the attention span for it and it just wasn't for me but I love the social part <laughs> and I had lots of friends and you know I really was that friend that a lot of people would always come to so I knew that I um, just from the get-go as long as I can remember I always like to make people feel um, they were included and and that they were you know that they were important that was one of the things and one of my traits that I think that I've always had um, uh, I opened my first business I went to beauty school as such and opened my first business when I was 19 years of age um, it cost me $18,000 it was back in the days when uh, interest rates were I think they were 18.9% it was wow, huge brutal brutal thousand dollars back in that day a little 19 year old that actually had no idea what she was doing it was big dollars um, you know, and mum and dad helped me get into that business. And I'd been in that business. Uh, I opened it in uh, January. I think it was 2004. I'd, sorry, 1994, a long time ago, giving my age away here. And, uh, and only about six weeks later, my brother was killed in a car accident. Wow. So pretty wow. huge to, um, you know, not only get the baptism of fire in business, but to also go through the most painful experience of my life and was such a pivotal moment for our family and anybody that's experienced something like that, especially at 19, you just know that there's a massive big black cloud over your shoulder um, for a long period of time. And um, But I'm so grateful for that experience and I'll share you know, some of the, the, the beauty that's come out of, you know, those painful experiences. Um, and I only had one week off. It was back in the day when, um, you know, the things weren't available like they are now. Like there wasn't, um, you know, you didn't go and get help. I didn't know if that was even available back then. But what was so beautiful is um, 
my parents really, it was just such a big change. My dad had always been a workaholic and from that moment, you know, he absolutely changed. His world became us. My brother actually worked for him in the family business and, um, you know, just I, I still, you know, when I think back to that moment, seeing my dad in fetal position on the floor, you know, have, losing a child and having children myself now, it's so huge. Mm. But he, he, he changed as a human. He was quite reactive. It was a very stressful household that we lived in uh, because they were entrepreneurs and they were, you know, really working hard. And I guess really, I guess his work sort of came before us. But from that moment, everything changed for him. And so I only had a week off and, um, you know, for me, I, you know, put my energy into my business. I was always a high performer as such um, and, you know, always willing to work outwork anybody, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, fast forward down the track. I realized that I was my biggest wounds were playing out there that I was trying to prove myself, um, which is a fear based, you know, really, you know, it got me to a certain point and it was great because it always made me um always uh, you know always be able to be work harder than anybody else and I created this amazing business I started out on my own um and then if I have to you know move you know years down the track I created three amazing successful beauty and skin clinics I had around 25 girls that worked for me and um you know we created I created a five million dollar empire and it was absolutely amazing so many lessons along the way. I jumped into business. I was a therapist. I definitely wasn't an entrepreneur. And so there was a lot of lessons uh, along the way. And, um, you know, and it's such an incredible journey when I think back now. And um, But I had my life awakening when I was 37. Um, I got home from another 12-hour day. And... Uh, in, at that stage in my business, I was working 60, 70 hours a week in the business, then trying to juggle all the other things that go along with business. And I just sat on the end of my bed. I walked into my family and I thought, oh, my God, I've gotten absolutely nothing left in the tank to give to the most beautiful people, my, my family. I had these children and a beautiful husband and I had nothing left to give them. And I thought something has to change here. And it was a moment, it was just like this epiphany. It was where I got to hold the mirror up and actually realise that I was the problem, but I was also the solution. And I really, from that point onwards, I worked out that I could create anything that I really wanted and that I didn't have to, um, you know, be the hardest worker that it, you know, that it, that it, I was really living in default mode, high performing in the business, but just not present. There were, and this just pushed me into this amazing journey of personal development. <laughs> First event, Tony Robbins. I think most people can say that Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, love it. Yeah, has had massive impact on their life. Um, and it was, uh, I remember going to my first event and I just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and just so many realisations of, you know, how I'd been living in default mode, victim mentality, um, that I was living my biggest wounds of not being enough, uh, that I was always continuously trying to improve, uh, to prove myself, you know, the teachers that, you know, that was always playing in the back of my mind, plus I'd also so had this trauma of my brother being killed and so I had all these destructive behaviors as well so yes I had an incredible business Monday to Friday but I would get blind on the weekend and you know try and um, uh, I guess suppress the pain that I was in um, alcohol was a big part of my life very social uh, very destructive um, and you know when I look back now, it was it's it's just like absolutely mind blowing that that was how I was living my life. I would smash myself at the gym. It was like I was torturing myself, but I realized that it was you know it was the healing that I needed to do, and um, you know so many epiphanies and along the way, and you know you get these big things that happen to you, and it it, it can be your life defining moment. You know, and for me, it's it's been absolutely life changing. I'm I'm so blessed for all the big things 
that have happened because they've been my biggest lessons and my biggest awakenings to be realize that I want to be I'm, I'm on this earth to share my gifts um, that I want to be an incredible role model for my children and that I get to impact through the businesses that, you know, through my businesses, um, you know, we I have a coaching program for salon and clinic owners where we do life and business. We run women's retreats and events and I've got a beautiful podcast as well. And just, you know, that I'm here for real impact, but my biggest and most important role for me is to just be an incredible mother to these three beautiful children. Um, oh, gosh. Lockie, Toby and Izzy, my, my absolute world. Um, and they're just so gorgeous. Like I look at them and I just, you know, they're just turning into adults. They're 18, 19 and 20 now. And, you know, just when I watch them and, you know, the better that I can be, the better that they become. And so that's been a really big lesson for me because there was a point in my life that my family didn't come first. And I guess it's a key teaching for me is that we have these businesses, but we need to put our life and ourself first and that our businesses sit in behind that and that we can have it all. We really can have it all. We've got to move from victim mentality, which is, you know, I think that's just how I was wired. It's what I saw. I didn't know how to have a conversation without trauma bonding. And the more that I knew about myself, the more that I could actually impact my family, impact my business um, and, you know, have the impact in the world that I want to have. But most importantly, feel good in, in with the human that I am becoming. And, yeah, so a lot of those destructive behaviours, lots of healing, <laughs> um, looking at the core wounds, um, really understanding that we get this gift called life and, I want to make it fucking incredible and I want to live in the moment and just, you know, just really enjoy the process. We're going to get moments that are thrown at us hundred percent. It's the human experience, isn't it? But being able to handle those in, you know, with, with power and poise and um, with calmness, I guess. That was so uh, and I apologize if there's any background noise. There's people doing like work right outside my office right now. So I'd apologize for that. But um, I might mute myself on and off as, as you talk. But wow, that is, there's so much crossover with how I view things and alignment with you and me. I think that's why we get along so well and so beautiful. And so there's so many things I want to zoom into. And I, I we might have to do a take, to, we might have to do a round two because there's so much here. But I would love to go more personal and then we'll get probably a bit more tactical with business. If you're okay zooming into it, like to go through at 19 years old, to go through one start in a business that can be fucking terrifying, especially because you're you're just like kind of trying to spin all the plates, learn everything through the sales marketing. Obviously, you said you had some beautiful role models in your parents, which is amazing. But I'd love to know what did what were the gifts that you got out of like and you said in hindsight, once you've obviously done the work and you did some healing, what were the gifts that came from losing a brother at that that age? even though you might not have recognized it then maybe later. I love the, I love the line that all of our wounds are gifts once they're healed, once you've opened the gift. So I'd love to know some of the gifts that you opened or that you received from your brother and, and losing your brother at that time. Yeah. Well, and I guess it took a long time to actually be able to see them, but the biggest gift for our family and for me was that we actually got the dad that we always wanted. Our, uh, you know, my parents were incredible role models. They were young and our life was chaotic, um, you know, and, and, you know, very busy and aggressive, you know. Um, I think it made us closer to be able to actually be able to speak our truth more. What's been beautiful about this experience is that my brothers and sisters and I we are all on this beautiful healing journey together. So many incredible conversations of really talking about our pain. I've got a brother that was a professional football player and, um, you know, like he's doing so much healing at the moment. And it's been able, you know, being able to really draw on the experiences that we've had and be able to really connect and do the healing together. We're, 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 the, the four of us are in this beautiful healing space right now 
Um, all of us have had destructive behaviours. Um, we've, you know, there's been mental health in our family. There's been all based on this trauma, you know. But what was so beautiful is too is just seeing my mum, you know, being a mum now, every day she showed up for us. There wasn't a day that she didn't bounce out of bed. Even she just lost her child and she showed up for us uh, and to, you know, to really be able to honour that as well. Um, but we, the biggest thing for me is that we got the dad that we've always wanted, the, this beautiful, calm dad that his life has been 100% dedicated to us children, which is huge. Um, and I think with that, you know, if I had to, you know, pull that apart, there's a lot of guilt there probably as well, like it is, you know, but, you know, he's just an absolutely beautiful dad. But the gifts, so many gifts, it made me really look at um, the destructive behaviours that I had, um, that you have to do the healing, you have to do the, when something traumatic happens like that, there is, a, a, there, there is healing that has to be done. You know, I was the last one to see my brother that night and, you know, I'd actually rang my parents and said that I had the keys to the car, to the, the car that he was driving. So for me, I carried a lot of guilt for a long time because I didn't actually have the keys. And then obviously when they got that knock on the door, they weren't sure what was going on. Um, it's everything's exactly how it's meant to be. You That's know? Great. It really is exactly how it was meant to be. I had, I, I thought about it. If it was one of us, my brother would never have coped. It always had to be him if there was one of us mm. that had to be taken. He lived life on the absolute edge. So he, into his 21 years of life, I reckon he, he slipped 40 years of, 50 years of life in that, um, lived every moment. You know, in today's day, he wouldn't even, he was classed, you know, fairly wild and just, just really made the most of his life and so it's exactly how it's meant to be and although the lessons may have come later um you know the the bond that we i have with my brothers and sisters is something that is indescribable mm. it's beautiful um you know and just yeah i just love them so much it's 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 beautiful i love that and, and i was the one that went first i started the you know the deeper conversations I started to do the work on myself and they've naturally risen to me and um, which has been beautiful. And, you know, that now that, you know, it, we're all on the same wavelength and, and journey. It's beautiful. I mean, life is just continuously healing. Yeah. All the time. It's the, uh, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And it's about just identifying, those parts of ours that we haven't learned to love, heal, accept and integrate and just constantly being aware of the the triggers and that are revealing those parts for you. I've I've got another question because I can just feel your 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 level of intuition for someone who's so amazing with the business side of things is so beautiful. And I think that's the part that I really admire about you. You've got such heart in what you do. It's I'm sure you've got all the systems, processes, marketing, sales, all that shit nailed, but it's just like there's it's just coated in love and and authenticity so if you were to have a conversation with your brother today and he was to see what you've done and how you've taken those gifts to integrate into what you do to heal to help others impact others what would he say to you um i think that he would say that he's proud of us you know proud of the the human beings that all of us have become you know, it really would be that. I know that he would be looking down upon us and just, you know, really just thinking, wow, you know, That's what funny. an incredible family to be a part of, even though it was for only a short moment. 21 years, beautiful. We got him for 21 years. Some people don't get that. So good. So, you know, just it would be proudness. Um, it would be, yeah, definitely proudness. Love. I, uh, we're going to still, still personal stuff, but I've got a story, which I, I might've shared it with you already, but I'll share it for this, for my audience. Cause I don't, I don't talk about that often. The topic is about how your personal life, your external world is an expression of your internal world. So your business is an energetic expression of you. And the best story I've got is actually Cohen. And for people that don't know, I was a part of Cohen's mastermind. That's where I met Beck. And, uh, she was a leader in that 
community already. And I remember my first mastermind. It was actually Marie that asked me the question. And I was um, on the table of a mastermind. And for people don't know, a mastermind, you pretty much have a table of like other leaders and business owners. And you pretty much share who you are, what you're doing, what you want help with. And they just kind of pick you apart and they'll throw questions at you to help you grow and learn. And I, it's my turn. I'm, I'm, I think, 21, 22 or something. And I've got the one gym and I'm like very like, tactics like very like practical skills sales marketing leads all that sort of like shallow stuff when you first start right and i'm like hey guys i'm lewis um uh i own a gym we do a couple hundred grand of revenue and i just need more leads and that was like what i thought it was and i hadn't done much deep work then i'd done like a bit of tony robbins a little bit of stuff but like not like the real like the real work right um and i remember and and i'm like the youngest by like 15 20 years on this table there's like 40 year olds 50 people doing like hundred tens of millions hundred millions of dollars and i'm like i'm gonna learn this magic secret of like sales and marketing and all this shit and marie looks me dead in the eye and she says what's your relationship like with your dad it was like the first question out the gate it just like hit my heart i was like oh and i hadn't done a lot of healing. Uh, I would say like the shallow, not, not not that it's shallow, but it just the entry level stuff, the motivational seminars and stuff like that. And it like just hit me in the heart. And that led me down like the NLP, the timeline therapy, the men's work, the breath work, the trauma work and all that stuff. And, and then ultimately business obviously improved because I obviously learned the skills and I got that stuff as well. But it's, I, we share a very, very strong belief that looking after yourself personally will improve you professionally and it will help your business and it will help you improve that way. I'd love to hear from you how you see that, how you teach that and your beliefs around why it is important to, yes, I'm sure there's time. And I do believe there are times where you got to suck it up and you got to do the big hours and sometimes it needs to happen, but within reason, because if you just burn yourself into the ground, which I did, and that's why the question was around for me, it's like the business is just going to burn energetically. It's going to be fucked essentially in, in, in the right terms. So how do you teach and what are your beliefs around the importance of looking after yourself personally, doing the inner work, addressing your stuff, and then how that then actually improves your business as well? Yeah, beautiful. For me, self-mastery is the core of what we teach because if we can't master us, how can we lead? How can we you know, show up in our business you know, with our full potential? Um, I love that you said intuition before because intuition for me is so important and um, it's our greatest gift. It really is. And, and I reckon that was the, the, the reason that I was able to um, move people. Like it's how I can move people in my coaching program. It's how I can really move people in my business, you know, get them to exactly where they want to be intuition for me is one of our greatest gifts but for me um self-mastery is everything we've got to understand this amazing gift that we've been given this this human body but how does it work and there's so much more at play here like if we have to think about you know our mind is so powerful but our mind can or you know it can be our best friend or it can be the thing that actually tears us apart so there has to be some kind of knowing how it actually works, you know, the conscious and subconscious mind and how that plays into everything, how we're programmed. You know, most of us don't realise that the programs or the stories that we're running are just programs that we accumulated, you know, from that naught to seven years of age. You know, we, we've been downloaded and conditioned and coded, you know, from parents and teachers and not only that from the, the society or religious you know, if we're in religions as well, they were actually coded. Like the way, the biggest thing for me was a lot of the stories that I was running were not even mine and being really conscious of those stories and, and how the mind actually works. Energetics, huge for me, that vibration, everything is a vibration. And, you know, that, we've, that there is the quantum world there and everything, everything we desire is already there. It's there ready for the taking. It's just finding what's the resistance that's stopping you and that's your, your limiting beliefs, you know, trauma. Hence why we have to do the internal work if we want to create or have those desires. Um, you know, for me, there's if our health is everything, a person's health and body will reflect exactly. If we've got sloppiness around that, we're going to have a sloppy life. Mm. It's as simple as that. This thing that we've been gifted with, we have to take care of it. 
took me a long time to realize that. Um, and I would look after myself Monday to Friday and then go out and smash myself. And look, this is a very common thing that I see for a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, they'll be healthy Monday to Friday, get well, you know, do all the things and then go out on the weekend and try and numb their pain, drugs, alcohol, sex, addiction, whatever it is. We see it. I, I know that you, you see it with a lot of your clients. Um, it's you know, the, the energetics, um, it's getting clear on exactly what you want. What do you want your health and body to be like? Set your standards, your non-negotiables, your relationship. And as you know, for me, big awakening three and a half months ago, especially with my relationship and my health, um, huge, beautiful um awakening so painful but so good so grateful for it now your relationship in our relationships a lot of the times we are in victim mentality we are trying you know we we're thinking that that person that we have this intimate relationship their job is to make us happy it's our job to make us happy and you know what is it for your business money what are the non-negotiables what are the standards and what happens is if you, you, you set those standards, people will either rise to you or they will disappear out of your life. And it's okay to let go of people that are not, um, it's not I'm sitting up here higher, but it's, it's, the, it's having a life where you have really rock solid non-negotiables and it's the basics. What, is, what are some for you, a question that, I was going to ask, which can pop up now. What are some of the daily, weekly habits that you have? It was going to be more like, how do you continue to like, I, I say, keep, keep the vessel clean from like, obviously health would be that, but also like mentally, emotionally, spiritually and all that stuff. So yeah, what are some of those standards that you have for yourself and that you hold yourself to? Something that I've always taught is my morning routine has been an absolute game changer for me. I've been able to manifest things into my life that like be able to collapse time and space purely through breath work and having some quiet time, give to myself first, be very intentional and then set my, you know, intentional, but then put my attention where I want it to go. So I have a lot of, um, you know, I do speak things into existence. I have a picture in my mind. I'm really clear on what I want. And so what I do is I feel it in my body as if it's already happened. So I used to wake up every morning and um, just have some quiet time, give to myself, touch my heart, breath work. I've got breath work in there now. I'm actually sharing one online this weekend, which is really powerful. Very cool. And then I would really sit and think about exactly how I wanted my day to play out. I would imagine the money into my business. I would imagine the client that's coming in, the team, how they would be energetically aligned to me. I would absolutely imagine all of it and then feel that in my body. And I, there's so many times I would, that night, I would come home, we would have like a, you know, 10 or $15,000 day and I would screenshot what I'd written in my journal that morning. And the girls were like, oh my God, this is amazing. And all as it was is just being really intentional. People do not give themselves enough time. If we are sitting in our parasympathetic nervous system, it means that we're adrenaline and cortisol driven. And I mean, I know because that's where I was for such a long period of my life. Like it was just fast, busy being busy um, and just at a fast pace, not being present. You know, sometimes we can, in those moments in the morning, it's, it's really just coming back to myself. Who do I want to be today? How do I want to show up? Who do you want to be today? Yeah. Well, when I started to really sit in that, I wanted to be calm. I didn't want to be this crazy, you know, there at one point, you know, before my epiphany, it'd be like, get in the car. Like it was just crazy in our house in the morning, get dressed. You know, I drive to school. Someone wouldn't have their school shoes on the bag. It'd be left at home. It was just chaos. And when I realized that I was creating the chaos, (laughs) <laughs> like it's unbelievable. And um, so being intentional, being grateful, you know, being grateful for the things that I already have. What are you grateful for today? Oh, I'm grateful for this beautiful body that I've been gifted. I'm grateful for my children, grateful for the, these incredible clients that I get to serve. 
Um, there's so much, my eyes, my voice, you know, all of this to be sitting here with you right now. You know, gratitude for me is the, the, the easiest way that we can change our frequency. And frequency and vibration is everything. Our thoughts are a vibrational frequency. And so if we're not tuned into the things that we really want at an energetic level, at an emotional level, so that's why we've got to go do the work. Because if we've got that emotional, um, you know, those things that, you know, really um, bogging us down, then it's not available to us. And if we're sitting in that parasympathetic nervous, that, uh, that uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system, then we are contracting, or you know, instead of that, you know, really being open and in our powerful state. It's it's so important that we, and that's why it's super important that we understand how this vessel works. We are a spiritual being having a human experience, and when that lands. And I think for me, it really hasn't landed properly. Like I truly didn't understand it until probably the last five years. Why is that? I think I just, um, you know, I, you know, with coaching and things like that, it was, I was doing the personal work, but I really tapped into that, you know, the, the energetics of, of business and life and, you know, Wayne Dyer. Oh, it's, he's, right, he's right behind me. Change, you know, your, thoughts, change your life is so good. That spirituality like I've been really searching for, like I knew there was more. There was something more. And so I've just been obsessed with learning. What was your, uh, it was one of my questions. What was your, there's many, there's not just one definitive one, but there'd be many like sort of spiritual, personal awakenings along the way. So what were some of the most pivotal ones for you? Like for me, when I first got started, it was Tony, went down to UPW, make a move, do the firewalk and all that stuff. And then it was like, uh, Martini was huge. Then Wayne Dyer was amazing. And then plant medicine played its part and then breath work. And then it's just like, you just keep going and keep going. And it's like, there's just always more. There's always more to go. So what were some of the more pivotal ones for you along your journey so far? Being so many, like, isn't it amazing? So many. I think the big thing is, is that we never reach the destination. Um, that it's forever work and you only get handed what you can, you know, to give you the gifts, if we can look at it like that. So, you know, um, three and a half months ago, my life blew up. I'm going to talk about this one because it's the most recent. Um, I sold my clinics around 18 months ago and somehow I, and I'm somebody that's done a lot of work and I just slipped unconscious. I, I slipped back into victim mentality I felt like I, it was like I was, it was just, I was just in this spiral. And I think I was even unaware of it, how bad it actually was. I was showing up for my clients, but I wasn't showing up anywhere else. I put on weight. My relationship nearly fell apart. I'm so blessed that, that I've been able to actually go back into repair phase for that. Um, and, you know, the kids weren't getting the best of me. I had no energy. I just, I, I was in this phase of, oh, what's next? I self-doubt had cre creeped in. And a really big awakening three and a half, you know, three and a half months ago. And I realized that if I could create all this shit, then I can also create a great life. And it's happened many times throughout my life, but this one has been the biggest. I was slipping back into old thought patterns, wound, old wounds were coming back up again. And I just didn't realize how bad I'd actually slipped down. And what a beautiful experience, you know, um, to go through. And in that moment, I just went back and did, you know, went back and looked at every part of my life. I went, hold on a minute, what are the habits that are not serving me? Um, where do I actually want to be? And I just created the vision again. I think I just didn't keep the vision there in my mind. You know, I'd always been so vision focused and impact and all those things that when I sold the clinics, it was, I just, it was just this new identity of well, what's next. It was very easy. That was easy. I was in my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I'd slip back into old patterns. 
And as I said, I would consider myself somebody that's done a lot of work that I would have actually consciously been able to tell or identify it quicker, but it didn't. It had to happen this way. Everything had to happen the way it happened. And, you know, to get to a point where there was a decision around my marriage, whether we were moving forward together or we were actually separating, it was huge. And I realized that I created all of the bullshit that was there. I'd mm. done it. If you're okay sharing because, and you're such a vulnerable person and thank you for all of this vulnerability, what's your, and the word may, may not be the right word, but your decision-making process or like, is it something like for me, for comparison, like when things come up for me that are like bigger things, it's like it, I've learned, um, I actually learned this through my leadership growth. It's like not having to make a decision right now. It's to actually like sit with it let the emotions be felt, honoring the emotions and then realigning and then asking myself some quality questions to then then be able to move forward. How how do you navigate like either personally or professionally and they might be the same or different. How do you navigate these these challenges that show up for you? Because it's some people think the challenges go away. No, they just get bigger and you get better quality challenges. And how do you navigate these? Is there like a process you go through? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you have your, your people that you talk to? Do you just sit with it? Yeah, how do you navigate yeah, well, let's talk about the relationship because I think that's a really good one because this was a moment of separation. The life that I thought I had could have, you know, I blew up our marriage. Um, it w but in that moment, um, it was my husband and I sat in the present moment. Sometimes there, there, there isn't a moment for going, for communication around what's happened or what the future looks like. It had to be the present moment. We just lived in the moment and there actually wasn't any communication around what's happened in the past or what the future looked like. And we will be able to come back to each other by just living in that present moment, more intimacy. Hmm. Not, you know, because if we're talking about past stuff, it can start arguments. It, it couldn't be there. And sometimes you're never going to agree on things. And so it was just living in that present moment, enjoying the moment, enjoying the moment, enjoying the moment when we were together with the kids. And it was just such a beautiful space that was created. Um, so that was really helpful. Sometimes we, we, you know, we're going, you did this and you did that. And what about this? And then, you know, and it's really such victim mentality. It was, so for me, I just went, I just want to live in the present moment and let's not worry about anything right now. Let's just sit here and see what happens. And it was just amazing that our connection was able to be rebuilt. Um, the intimacy was like mind blowing. And it just reminded me why I was with this man. Mm. And so that in itself was a gift. Um, when it comes to business, you know, for me, the biggest thing is, is that I never make decisions when I am in reactive mode. So because you, 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 you're going to make dumb decisions. So it's just, you know, coming back, a bit of box breathing or whatever breath it is, whatever I need to do to come back to a, you know, a, a powerful state where I got my gifts, my intuition, my intelligence. Um, when sometimes you're in the shit, when the shit hits the fan, it's really hard to, dig into the toolbox. I reckon it's the hardest yeah. time yeah. to dig into the toolbox yeah. and grab out the tools yeah. because your brain is just so busy and monkey mind and oh, you're just playing over what's going on and it's, it's, it's so contracting. And so for me, I find the breath is the most powerful thing that we can tap into in those moments. Mm -hmm. Always the breath. Write things down, you know, really good to get your thoughts out. Yeah. Um, and for me, gratitude is always something that I will always, um, it's, it's huge. It's part of, it's part, part of every single moment. I cruise around all the time. Oh, my God, I'm so grateful. All this here. I'm so grateful to be doing this with Lewis this morning. I've messaged my group. Oh, my God, I'm having a message. You know, just really great, being grateful. Because a lot of the time what we're focused on is the things that we don't want. And so what do we keep creating? The fucking things that we don't want. Like we're so focused on the problems that sometimes we've got to move away from the problems 
and start to think about what we do want. And, you know, finding the solutions. Sometimes we can't find the solutions in the moment, but if we just take some time, we don't always have to have the answers right there and then. Give yourself a moment if that's what you need. Cool. One more personal and then we'll do a little bit of business stuff. What are you currently healing through right now? One of the things that I'm healing through right now is my thinking that, um, and I said it before, like I looked at my husband for the person to make me happy and knowing that that's not actually his job. It's my job to make me happy. And that comes from, you know, I would say from looking at, you know, younger, looking outside myself for, you know, um, being complimented, being um, told that I'm good, you know, all those things. So I think your intimate partner cops all of that, really. So it's me that has to build me. It's me that has to love me. I'm looking at him for love because I didn't love myself in those moments. You know, I've I've had time where I have absolutely loved myself, but somewhere along the line, I'd fallen back out of love with myself. And so it's me that needs to love me. And the more that I love me, oh, my God, it's amazing how people just, just, you're just vibrating that. And they just it, it naturally, um, he's just, he's loving me sick because I started to love me again. And it was that thought of not being loved or good enough when I was younger. Yeah. It's come back again. So there we go. We've got to heal it again yeah. and look into it maybe a little bit deeper, you know, or maybe I didn't get the full healing that I needed. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. For your clients, what is the most common problem or obstacle or block that's stopping them from growing? It, this may be a personal or a professional answer. It might be a bit of both, but yeah. What do you, what do you mainly help your clients with? Is probably the question. Yeah. So we've got a full coaching program. So it's business and so, uh, you know, personal um, for me, what stops most of the clients is themselves. Can it's you the, zoom, it, zoom in on that? For a bit? Yeah. It's the mindset. It's the the um, the so yeah mindset. It's you know being caught outside themselves. You know um, you know listening to you know well, all all that conditioning and coding that they haven't actually worked through. That they've got to realize that they're not there even their story. Scarcity mindset for me that's huge and victim mentality, and you can hear it in their language. There's a poor me about it all. And so those two things are the two things. So victim mentality, scarcity mindset, always the mind. They don't give to themselves. They don't actually give to this person first. And they're just out giving to everybody else and they wonder why they've got no energy. And so that for me is the biggest thing that we're continuously working through. And they slip unconscious back to consciousness, unconscious consciousness. So, you know, for me, really, it is about raising the consciousness of the human beings that we get to um, have in our programs because that's really what we're doing here. Speaking straight to my purpose right there. Love it, love it, love it. So if you were to write a book, are you going to write a book in the future? Um, So I've had a couple of ideas. Yeah. yeah, I do actually have a couple. Of, I've actually got a book cover that I've already. It's on my vision board. So. It's, it's it's in the ether. <laughs> it's it's out there. It, it's going to happen. Love it. Say in this particular book, you could only leave three lessons for the world. And the only lessons you could leave. What would be those three lessons? Master you, and you master your life. That we are. Um, Uh, a spiritual being having a human experience. I know that's been said before, but once we really understand that, it's huge. Energy is never created or destroyed. It just changes form. I like this woman. I like this woman a lot. Yeah, and it's huge, especially when there's a death. And I think that, oh, can put that in there. When I actually understood that, 
that my brother's still here with us. Like, you know what I mean? It's just changed form. That was yeah. a big story. That was a huge learning for me when I learned that. Yeah. Um, that we all have incredible gifts inside of us. Our role as a human being is to share those gifts. We've got to, you know, to unleash them and really understand that those gifts are our legacy that we get to leave behind, the impact, to make the world a better place right now than when we found it. And we can all play a really beautiful part in that to make this, you know, the universe, you know, in a better, in better shape than when we found it. They're probably my three things. What do you think about a lot, but you don't talk about very often? Hmm. Oh, probably quantum energy. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with it um, at the moment, but I do think about it a lot. Um, what do I think about a lot um, and don't talk about? Mm, I'm pretty good at talking about things. <laughs> I definitely got better at that because it wasn't some, wasn't one of my strong points. I got I got to say I learned how to be a really great communicator, and I think it's a powerful tool that we all need. Um, I think about a lot, you know, when I go to the supermarket, and I probably don't talk about it. Is that I feel really sad sometimes when I go in there and I see the things that people are eating. I see the state that they're in. Um, you know, people, when they're driving, they're angry. Like there's a lot of um, dysregulation in humanity. And it's probably something that I don't talk about enough. It makes me feel really sad. It really does because I look and think, oh, you just, just haven't been able to get the information that you need to make the changes. You know, that's it's probably one of the things that really makes me sad if only i could run up to people at the supermarket they would think i was crazy and go hey <laughs> how could you give them some wisdom to make them really change and so in those moments i always smile at people i make sure that i've got a really high frequency to try and make people go oh wow that's nice because everybody's walking around eyes down there's no love there's not enough love it's just poor me if you were to share some wisdom with those people, like the things you'd love to share with them, what would you want to share with them? That, you know, that they are, they are beautiful, they are worthy, that they are powerful and that they get to live this incredible life if they choose mm. and it can be whatever they want it to be. Magical. What's showing up for you right now? As we start to wrap this up, what's showing up in Rebecca's world? Showing up for me right now is, um, for me, like I've been really focused on my health and relationships, which has been so beautiful. Um, and I've got some beautiful things that I really want to um, bring to the world, you know, um, even more for my clients um, when it comes to our events and our retreats and just take it to the next level. Um, I've just started a legacy group, which is so amazing. These conversations are different. You know, we get to go in there and talk, you know, quantum and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's beautiful. I just want to increase my spirituality. I just want to continue to be the best human that I possibly can be. I want to be less reactive and, you know, which is, I feel really, I feel like I'm moving through my days really beautifully, which is so great. And that is the level of consciousness that now I'm bringing to each moment. So, yeah, moving through all those things, I want to, you know, I will have more experiences with my family. Like that's really important to me. Um, and, you know, really show people that they can create life and business by design um and that it's not as hard as what we think it is and it all comes back to self always such wisdom such depth and we've only literally scratched the tip of the iceberg today if there was one more message that you'd like to share with my audience or with the world right now what would it be 
message that I would like to share is um, we are limitless. We are absolutely limitless beings. And the only thing that stops us is the way that we think and our conditioning and programming. And if you are willing to dive into that, then that's where you will unleash, you know, that limitless life and that all the challenges are a gift. You know, embrace them, step into them and, um, and know that you are worthy, loved, just as you are. So beautiful. Who are your sole clients that you'd like to call in and how can they find you? How, they, how can they connect with you? Beautiful salon and clinic owners that are, that are willing to really step into that next level of them. That it's doing the personal work along with the business work. Um, you know, most of the clients that I serve have team that they really want to step into their purpose and the mission and the reason that they're here on this earth. And that they're not just going to work for a job, that it actually really is something of meaning. It gives them fulfillment, but also to be able to not just have a business, but a life they absolutely love with an incredible body, incredible relationships, incredible money coming in the door and life just feels good. Beautiful. Becca, thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, for your energy, for all the value that you're adding to the people around you, your clients, the business world, the collective consciousness that you're on a mission to raise and you are raising. Thank you for your time and I'm just super grateful for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. I absolutely love you. And I want to just, you know, give you a moment of um, just, I'm so happy that we reconnected. Um, you're just an incredible human being. And I, I love that we're mates now. I won't, we've been mates, but, you know, we've just, you know, we've, we've moved into a great friendship I'm so proud of everything that you've done and um, I just love you and thank you for having me today. Thank you. Likewise, the love's there. I love who you are and yeah, thank you for, for this conversation. Very grateful.